I'm Neil Mila, and uh, thanks for watching this content series we're putting together. We've been producing some videos over the last few few months, I guess, about entrepreneurship and life on the farm, and how I'm kind of using my story and my narrative to kind of bring people together and help unify the uh, the rural community in terms of ag and technology and innovation. Um, some people have asked, you know, what's the true true purpose of this, and you know, we haven't been doing videos very consistently, sometimes maybe just once a month or less. And over the next few months, we're going to really ramp it up, I think. I've got a couple great guys helping me. Uh, Andrew, uh, you know, why don't you show a picture of yourself? You know, turn the camera around. Turn the camera around. Turn the camera around. There's, there's Andrew, and uh, he's, uh, you probably can't hear him. Andrew, I'm going to give you the mic, and uh, you just start talking about yourself. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll flip it around here for you. We'll try to do an improv interview of, of you. Talk about me. Yeah, tell your story um, real fast. All right, I went to school for engineering, decided that I hated it, was failing classes, so I switched to film. Um, I haven't really been able to do a whole lot with that yet because since I switched majors, I didn't get a lot of time to really make content and people don't feel like I have as much experience as they want to hire me, so I'm out here with Neil to get some more experience, I guess. That's me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, as you can see, we're out here on the farm today. Um, you know, we've been doing some tile work, which um, is kind of dirty. Um, so, got to get this back in there. But, yeah, that's a, that's a, you can tell I'm real experienced with microphones, can't you? Uh, so, anyway, we're going to be putting some content together. You know, last summer I was very fortunate to welcome so many wonderful people to the farm. We had visitors from Africa. Absolutely. And this is the best the part. I said this is the best part since I've been here. Yes, yes. like yeah. the best yeah. day yeah. so far in Mandela Washington mm -hmm. Fellowship yeah. experience. Absolutely. This is awesome. Yeah. And you have Tanzania, Botswana, Nigeria, Nigeria and Mauritius. Mauritius. Like yeah. three, four different countries yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised in the next five, ten years and the four of us are really making waves in our country. and. Absolutely. We have to give the thanks back to God and to you, to you yeah. for having us, yeah. for hosting us. I mean, this yeah. is so generous, so, so, so generous. So generous. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had visitors from all over the world here. And, you know, the more I travel, the more I speak with young entrepreneurs, the more they want to see behind the scenes of what it's like to, to do something new and innovative. Are we, you guys want on too? Yeah, Everybody get in here. All right, all right, all right. Let me in here. This is, um, this is great. Although the camera can fit us all in. He's not, he don't know. You know, over the next few months, we'll be doing all sorts of stuff, showing, you know, our experiences. And the objective is to show the raw, true behind the scenes, what it's like to be a rural entrepreneur. And unfortunately, I think what happens is, especially when it comes to innovating new technologies, um, a lot of young people think just because they don't live in the big city and because they don't, have a chance to experience the narrative that maybe your more mainstream entrepreneurs have that they can't do it themselves. And look at me, you know, I haven't had a shower today. I'm all dirty. You know, I look like a like I'm, you know, just just out here doing doing manual labor. But that's good because when you live in the reality of what it is you're trying to accomplish, and you know, living the reality of how people who are going to be using your products or services live. You're in such a wonderful position to bring about more innovative change and, uh, and, tr and truly make a difference. And that's kind of the, being a farmer, that's the narrative I live. And I want to kind of show that, but also show how we're working hard to, you know, bring about new technologies and new initiatives, which inspire people and bring, bring positive change. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of the first official vlog uh, that we're doing. Um, and we're going to be doing, I think, a lot more uh, consistency. I've, I've, I've got another guy named Sam who's going to be helping us. Video, video. Uh, you 
won't see him today, but uh, he's from Indianapolis. So we've got a lot of great, great talent behind this, this project, and um, we'll go from there. All right, so we're driving out to the, uh, where we're doing some tile work. Um, so the guys have been working on this this morning, and we're going to go check out the progress they've made. But uh, as you can see, a lot of these fields, it's rough, by the way. This is not Andrew. He's a much better camera guy than this, but I'm testing them, you know, seeing how good he can do with all the motion. But uh, anyway, a lot of these fields we have are pretty wet naturally, and we've got to put it in drainage tile, which helps uh, the plants when they're growing, because obviously, Unless you're growing rice, you don't want to be having puddles of water everywhere. And uh, on one of these, the, this, this particular field, uh, some of the old drainage tile from the probably the 1930s, 1940s, which was clay, has started to decompose and become brittle, which then makes it fail. When it fails, we get big puddles out here, which uh, doesn't do much for the crops. So we're going to go take a look at, at that. All right, so as you can see, this is some of the old clay tile that's, that's uh, kind of just failed. And uh, it's, it's thick, but it's pretty brittle. And as you know, the freeze and thaw cycles come and everything like that, it just kind of goes down downhill fast with all the stuff that's kind of been busted out. So we're replacing this with a new 12 inch plastic tile. Next time this needs to be replaced, it won't be our problem. So let's see what's, uh, What's going on with that so yep another another afternoon on the farm um, but this afternoon we're gonna kind of um, you know because we're kind of at a stopping point with this got this segment patched um, just got to do a little bit more work to kind of make sure that ends uh, pretty solid but we're gonna go to Delphi which is a town close by here um, really small town but meeting with some people uh, about trying to help some young some students, uh, young people, uh, kind of become engaged in the multimedia uh, landscape. A lot of people uh, get their news in, in this small community through one newspaper, which is fine. They they do they do their 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 work the best they can. But my thought process is if we can get the schools involved and get it so they can create content in terms of a multimedia platform or service that goes out to the community. We can engage the students, we can engage the schools and help them um, give young people a chance to have firsthand experience creating content that's consumed by, by local residents, which is just going to help everybody. It's going to create more content, it's going to give them a chance to kind of engage and really prepare for a future that's going to be all about video. It's all about, you know, truly real-time media. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting conversation. I think we're going to meet with a teacher from, from a local school as well as a lady in charge of local economic development. All right, so we're back here at the farm. Uh, I'm going to take a quick shower and get cleaned up. mic on here this thing in all right so we're here at the brick and mortar which is a restaurant here in Delphi uh, as you can see it's a fairly new restaurant uh, kind of nice to have some places to congregate and we're gonna be meeting today with the uh, a teacher from Delphi schools and Julia Leahy who works with economic development in the county we're really talking about ways we can engage students more in the production of media that kind of benefits the community. I think a lot of times the citizens of like a rural town, especially they're, you know, they have a, maybe a, a newspaper that's been delivering the same sort of content for, for years. And there are all these young people who have so much potential and so much energy and they see the world in a different way, in a, maybe a modern way. 
and we want to try to bring engagement of them so we're going to try to figure out if we can find a way to work with the schools to get them involved in, in producing some content so let's go inside This is Julia Leahy. Julia, hey. say hi. And who are you? Hi there, I'm Amy Tonsoni. Hey, I pleasure to meet you. Nice pleasure to meet you. you. So, so yeah. great to meet you guys and come on in. We... <laughs> this is basically, I have hired two or three video guys to follow okay. me around and they document my interaction relative to the farm, my travels, okay. Okay. entrepreneurship. Okay. So basically it's just a daily video blog like okay. that documents entrepreneurship in a rural community okay. in action. Okay. So these right. are the same guys that are going to start videoing the rural start stuff. Oh, so all the okay. rural models we feature, yeah. they're going to do that. No, that that's a fun you know, so I finally put in, you know, it's, it's taken a long time to first of all find people like Andrew and I have another friend named Sam who's from Indianapolis okay. who's at South by Southwest this week. Okay. But we have to show people the true substance of, you know, when you're living in a small town, you know, you can do, I think, substantial things. No, sure. It just takes a little bit more effort and planning. Uh, you know, people like Andrew have to drive an hour to the farm, uh, you know, 35 minutes. So, you know, I think being able to show this, the, the, the nuts and bolts that go into bringing these programs to life, I think is going to be really, really empowering. Okay, good. To, to other people. So, well, Julie, why don't you talk more about what you're doing with this this okay. this this board? Right. How would you describe it? <laughs> well, so the Carroll County Chamber, we've been around about 11 years, and there used to be a leadership program, and that kind of went away just recently. Um, and it's been a good couple three years, and so we need that. We're missing that. We're not developing our leaders. And I've always wanted to get involved with youth leadership. And so when we were able to get our 501c3 and start this foundation, that opens up doors for us to um, find new partners and get some grants, I'm hopeful. And so we started the foundation. It's called, it's, so it's FIVE5. It's Foundation Inspiring Vision and Entrepreneurs. And the board consists of Neil Milet. So Neil is... Uh, Neil's kind of a visionary all on his own, you know. Yeah. I think I should pay you to, to make me feel good. Oh, please. You know? yeah. But then we also have Superintendent Bryles, Mr. Bryles, and we have um, my board president, which is Rex Millhouse, and then our treasurer is Heather Hoover, and then she brought in Jacqueline. Can you remember Jacqueline's last name? She's at Security Federal. Right. She's, she was at that meeting we had, the lunchtime yes, meeting. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she... She's really active with, um, I believe it was the Latino Association. Mm -hmm. She organizes mm -hmm. that big mm -hmm. event down at Purdue. And then she also goes to, was it the Toastmasters? The I forget Optimist all. Club? The she's Optimist very Club. active, though. Anyway. Very active. She's very young, and she's yep. excited about working and yep. doing some things for kids. So we kind of brainstormed, and one of the ideas that came out of it was, um, how can we share positive news that's happening in Carroll County to help us grow our community and um, have an impact on economic development because the news that is coming out of um, locally shall we say is rather negative and one-sided and we thought the kids have a voice right why not start something called the student voice or whatever we want to do so yeah something to really yeah. let the, the, the modern reality of media which you know, traditional media is dying. Yeah. And I think small communities is a perfect example of that, where, you know, five, ten years from now, will these papers and will these, in some cases, radio stations even be alive? Probably not. You know, at least they won't be reaching the demographic that's currently, you know, actively working in them. You know, so if there's a way, one of the things we talked about is ways we can use the students, maybe at Carroll and Delphi to begin with, create a program that lets them you know, be part of the media generation process and, you know, engage them in it and, you know, provide financial backing, whether that's through advertisements or through sponsorships, 
that allows them to create really unbiased content <laughs> that's more than the obituaries <laughs> yeah, every week. That's true. You know, that can truly <laughs> yeah. empower them and give them a head start. Yeah. And uh, well, and share know. their view on what yeah. they want to see in their communities. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. And with your experience with the Parnassus and everything that you do with creative writing and stuff, we thought, you know. Well, I appreciate the opportunity yeah. and the, just the insightfulness that yep. I'm hearing. Yep. And I want to back up just a minute okay. before we come back to the writing. Okay. I don't know if you're trying to grow your committee in any way or what you have Oh, mm-hmm. sure. But um, this is going to sound like a biased opinion. No, oh, I'm sorry. But my husband. Yeah. It's all about innovation, yep. entrepreneurship. Oh, good. He's okay. He's pushing that, and he's really okay. frustrated. So what, what does he do? He teaches at he's the high school. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. And bracketology. Have okay. you heard about the bracketology guy? It, well, it's, it's nationally known. Yes, what? that's her husband. Yeah, he's yeah. the one who heads that. <laughs> okay. And he, yeah. he's experimented with, okay. he would love to teach an innovation class. Yes. Wow. Now, okay. Mr. Files brought up Don Wetrick to me. Are you familiar with him? The I introduced them. You did? I'm the one who introduced them. Don is a good friend of mine. And, mm. he, and he and my husband know each other. No way. From, oh, wow. from e-learning okay. conferences and things. Okay. And he's kind of Brian's hero. And Don Brian would love to be the Don Wetcher of Well, really Don would. and his daughter are coming to my farm within oh. the next couple of weeks <laughs> because Ava, his oldest daughter, has a, a podcast. Okay. And she's going to interview me, and we're going to help her kind of get more of a, a different entrepreneurial story. So my plan is to bring Don by the high school on that same day, <laughs> so we could introduce you guys, yes. or your, you know, okay, your husband yes. and Don, and spend yes. some time together and brainstorm. Okay, I would definitely. So, okay, Brian. Yeah. With, okay, he has a probably. The, I don't know. He just gets it. He, he's. I think he's on your level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With where you want to go with this. Yep. And um, I would love to do my part with the student voice in the newspaper. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But um, yep. I think I think Brian's more the okay. guy to grant to go as far as ideas. The, okay. The idea man Good. Okay. Where he'd really like to see the school fit into this okay. in an ideal world. And I don't know, you know, where that would go. Oh yeah. sure. But I would no, just that's like great. to throw him out there as a perfect somebody else to yeah. talk to. That's, that's awesome. what we want. Yeah. Um, it's so amazing that he he loves Don because. Oh, yeah. You haven't met Don. Well, I guess one, it's Spirit Day. Uh, this is one of my students. It's Tourist Day. I didn't wear my tourist Hawaiian shirt, but uh, one of the things that they came to me with, they had an idea, and and I started. I, I want to start sharing what our students are working on, and they had a kind of a cool idea, and this is called a pivot. And we had a discussion today on one of the fastest growing segments uh, of need in our population, that is baby boomers, and we're just kind of talking about baby boomers in general. I haven't met Don. But Don, Don is, okay. I, I met him because we spoke together at Purdue last fall. Okay. And the moment I met him. I was like, if, if there was a Don in every school across America, okay. just think about the impact it'd have on the kids. Yeah. Huh. Okay. He, he takes it upon himself to create this curriculum that's truly about the students. It's not about textbooks. It's about, hey, let's get them to find what their passion is okay. and even start businesses when they're still in high school. Okay. He has high school kids who have, had, have patents made. Oh, I yes. Believe. Really? They have their own patents already. They haven't even graduated from high school yet. One of, okay. his, one okay. of his high school kids okay. was making six figures before he even graduated. Okay. You know, so, <laughs> some truly yeah. inspiring stories, yeah, but it's all, you know, okay. he, he, he helps them, he encourages them. Yeah. He's, he's so empathetic and okay. he's, he's just a phenomenal guy. So good meeting uh, with those folks about the, the opportunity with doing some media in the schools. It's going to be an exciting project. We didn't film the whole thing because we're still planning it out. Want to keep some of it somewhat under wraps, but um, yeah, we're going to engage students and I think get them an opportunity to really be part of this new media landscape and create some content that allows uh, older generations to really um, you know respect them. So. 
All right, let's go to Lafayette now. All right, so we're gonna go have dinner at the East End Grill now. It's a restaurant Lafayette, and some of my friends are meeting up, and they're all entrepreneurs in the Lafayette area. So not small town, not big town either, though. There should be a good opportunity to hear about the wonderful things they've been doing, and I'm looking forward to bringing uh, forth some of their stories, some of their stories of success and failure, because uh, they've been through it all. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? We'll find out. Hey, how are you? Is there a mic? Uh, there we are, right there. I just want to right. make sure I'm on the camera here. Oh, Landon, How's man. Going? What's good, brother? Good to see you. How do you know you were coming? I didn't know you were coming. You were like, <laughs> you were like on the list. I was not on the list. I, I didn't see the RSVP, nor oh. did I see the Facebook post. Here, That's cool. Here, we can pull some chairs. You squeeze in there. Yeah. We got a chair here. We okay. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm cold, so I'm going to sit here. How's it going, Good to man? see you, man. Good to see you. Well, we got to get you guys, some of your guys' stories tonight. You know, that's that's the objective. You said you were, you said you were bringing one of your camera guys. I didn't know that it would be, like, active. I basically was sitting there and I'm like, it was supposed to be for business owners and like help and support and like that. And like, everybody that was there, nobody was a business owner. Really? And I'm like, it was all great people, yeah. some people with some knowledge and expertise, yeah. but I'm like, which is cool. I'm not actually talking with anybody that's actually doing it. Yeah. It's either support people, which again are fine and have their role, or people that like want to do it, but it, some of them like, you've been wanting to start a business for like three years, like, you're just never gonna do it. Right, you know, and so I was like, where? How can I get people? So that was the idea. With the dollar, was you have a dollar of equity, so you're an owner. You have a dollar of revenue. You actually sold something to a customer, and they've given you money, right? Like maybe even more money than you wanted, right? or you thought you could ever get. Magic, magic, right? And you know, some kind of dollar of payroll. You're paying yourself. You're paying somebody. You're paying somebody else. You know, you've got some expenses and stuff like that. So, so yeah. No, I really don't have hopes for this to become a, anything more than a few, a few people. Meet some new people, make some connections with people. There's no, I have no goals. I just eat dinner. I love whenever it got brought up uh, at that event. Oh, at Foundry? And someone got shut down. <laughs> so what up this while well, you guys were Tim Peoples, who's a great guy. I really oh, respect well, him. I really respect him. But yeah, Paul called me out. Uh, he was like up on stage with Tim. Or up at front at the front and foundry with Tim and, and called me out of this idea and I'm like, well crap, now I gotta do it. Yeah. And Tim, in the supportive way that Tim is, said like, Great, sign me up, I'll be there. And Paul turned and looked at him and goes, You can't come. <laughs> because Tim doesn't own a business, right? Like he works at the foundry. He doesn't own the foundry. He's not really responsible for its longevity and its existence and its yep. being, right? Yep. He's like, yep. You can't come. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of my point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Probably won't love being on video.